this is uh, going to be a, uh, wow, it's hard to get over this flu. This is bad flu. <laughs> it's like the kind of flu you die from. Uh, thank God I'm mostly over it. This is a two-part video. Um, uh, buddy of mine, I, uh, he said I could quote him, is uh, famous uh, haute couture and supermodel photographer Benjamin Canarac. You can check out his blog and um, his uh, Instagram account below. He shoots uh, covers for Elle, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and countless other magazines. And uh, I can't think of like a famous uh, supermodel and uh, uh, high-end model that he hasn't shot. Um, you just hit his name on Google and hit image like, wow, wow, you know, I've seen that image before. It's like, that's his image. Anyway, he picked up an X-T2 and a few lenses, and uh, uh, I don't know if he owned a mirrorless, I don't think he owned a mirrorless camera before, but anyway, I was doing uh, some tips and tricks and going over the menus and stuff, and I was like, yeah, it'd be really helpful if you do this and this, and this is what happens when you do that. And uh, I'm going to quote him on a couple things here, and he said I could. Um, today he said, by the way, I've been doing this for the past uh, five days or so. Yeah, today he said uh, the X-T2 is ipso facto the most beautiful camera he's ever had his hands on or seen in his entire life. He has the X-T2 with vertical grip, 56mm, 35mm 1.4, and 90mm. Um, he's been so shocked. It's been actually uh, a pleasure listening to his responses. He's been posting some images over on a DP Review and on his Facebook page and and uh, just uh, testing out and getting uh, familiar with the camera. And uh, I've actually never heard such exuberant, uh, joyful happiness. <laughs> as, as <laughs> I listen to him, like, uh, see some of it, like, peaking, like, focus peaking and slapping. And he got some adapters off my recommendation. And I uh, was uh, putting some really fast lenses on there, like the Medicon 8512 and some other stuff, and having so much fun with peaking. I mean, it was like... Uh, I don't know how to compare it. It's kind of like, like if a 14-year-old dude like got a date with like, uh, you know, the the hot beauty queen or something like that kind of level of excitement. So <laughs> he's uh, so happy with the camera. I just wanted to relate that to you. I didn't say he switched or anything because he shoots Nikon D800s and D800Es. Um, but uh, he said for the 133 DPI or whatever it is for his mag covers and. Uh, you know, the centerpieces, obviously, he said that you can get away with, uh, you know, four to six megapixels, so. Um, anyway, I, I thought that was uh, fascinating. The past few days have been uh, uh, enjoyable, like, uh, you know, showing some of the ins and outs in the Fujifilm system to him and the tips and tricks and, you know, how to make things easy. Because otherwise, you know, you just kind of learn this stuff on the fly, and if I could cut to the chase on all of it and be helpful, then... That was wonderful uh, to uh, be helpful on that for him. And uh, like I said, he's a prestigious photographer of uh, great renown. And uh, he's uh, <laughs> he's been screaming in joy over the Fujifilm X-T2. Uh, all saying all sorts of awesome stuff. Like, oh my God! Stuff. You know, I can't imitate his voice, obviously. Um, check his uh, blog and his uh, Instagram uh, below and see some of his fascinating work. Um, second point is, and I made this point like well over a year ago, and <clears throat> really since I translate ancient Greek and I'm a hardcore metaphysician and philosopher, and I don't mean Western existentialism, that's not philosophy. I'm talking about real philosophy, ancient Indian, ancient Greek, as I've always gone by the motto that, uh, as my motto, is nothing true is popular, nothing popular is true. You know, there's some stuff that people don't have just because they can't afford it, like Lamborghinis and caviar, right? It's like, you know, you just, I can't afford that stuff either. However, caviar is cheap in Russia when I live there. Um, so that's a poor analogy. I mean, most people that have a decent uh, camera can afford a Fujifilm. And what I find really amazing is that, and I'm not attacking him for it. I kind of am, but not really. Uh, some of these top five, six, seven roughly photography channels, they don't talk about Fujifilm. I mean, for pure uh, uh, padded content, a couple of them have done, uh, you know, I'm going to review the X-T2. I got it shipped in as a rental. You know, you rented it. You know, you didn't actually buy it and want to learn the system. That These channels don't, they generally don't, it's amazing. Now, here's another fact too, the GFX, which is you know, is it an expensive camera? Not really. I mean, it costs as much as an Icon D5. 
of those top five, six, whatever photography channels, this is an important point, you know, let me draw a conclusion here. I'm the person least likely, and I'm not saying I'm top, I don't know, I'm rated number 13 or whatever the hell I am. I'm the person least capable to buy that camera so far as income. I have no affiliate links, and my income is infinitely less than any of those guys. So why is it that I own a GFX? And none of those guys even mess with it. They haven't tested it. They haven't reviewed it. They don't own it. Stuff like that is really telling to you. Now, superficially, one might unintelligently, and I emphasize that word, unintelligently conclude, well, that means that, you know, maybe the GFX is not so hot, or, you know, these top photography channels are No. Actually, it does just the opposite. Because, you know, it costs as much as an Icon D5, and several of those channels own an Icon D5 or have tested it. They've not tested it. They've not used it. They don't own it. They don't talk about it. Likewise, the case with like the X100F, those channels. They don't talk about it, they don't use it, they don't own it. XT2, I mean, I can't even tell you how many bazillion people have told me they bought this camera off my recommendation and just as happy as, the, happy as a pig in crap. It's a southern saying. Happy as a woodpecker in a lumber yard. The fact that these top five, six, seven channels uh, don't discuss Fujifilm in general, you know, once, you know, one guy did get the Fuji X-U2 and a few lenses in. He went out and he tested it. He rented it. He didn't buy it or anything. He rented it and he... That's called filler. The point is, is like that was one video, maybe two. But these guys aren't talking about Fujifilm. And that is actually... I'm not saying I don't respect those channels, but th those channels are about creating content for monetary income. Now, you might think that I do that. And I don't care if you think that, but I don't do that. Um, I have no affiliate links, and I'm not pimping and shilling for anybody. You know, I, I do bust my butt on emails and comments, and even the people that hate me know that. But I know, because I've been fixing cameras and lenses and fixing lots of stuff for well over 20 years, that this is currently the best-made camera out there. Fujifilm, now, you want to spend $20,000 on a Leica? Fine. Bad customer service in the case of like a really expensive camera, horrible customer service. Kind of counterintuitive, but that's the case. Outside of Leica, which does not count, it's like, why doesn't it count? Because it, it just doesn't count. You know, talk about a rangefinder camera for Christ's sakes. Fujifilm is making the best camera, has the best customer service, has the firmware support. You know, everybody, everybody knows, even people don't like Fujifilm. God, they're always doing firmware updates. The fact that these top five, six, Depends on who you count. Let's say five or six. They don't discuss Fujifilm. They generally don't own it. They don't talk about it. You you know, they own an Icon D5, which costs as much as a, a Fuji GFX. Why the hell didn't they borrow that and talk about it and discuss it? None of them did. My point is, is that the philosophy that I've worked off for so many years is that if I see people that I respect the least, and I don't mean that I hate them, I mean... These people, if I met them in the street, I'd give them a hug. People that know me and that have met me, like Louis Von John, the English guy that came and went, you know, I gave him a bunch of stuff, really kind of. They know I'm that way. If I met these these photography channel guys, and you know, I'd give them a handshake and a hug and like buy them a soda or whatever, coffee. I don't drink alcohol. But the fact that you know, on a level of uh, disrespect, meaning I generally don't respect the stuff that they talk about. Doesn't mean I don't I disrespect them. It's kind of hard to say this. It means that, you know, if these guys are really praising it, then there's something suspect about it. The nit nitty gritty of what I'm trying to get to, and it's hard to talk about retroduction. It's kind of like you know, you go to Walmart, you see all the, the people that you would never, <laughs> the lowest common denominator. The fact that these people don't talk about it and generally don't review Fuji Fujifilm, which is currently the best main camera, best customer support. That is extremely um, uplifting um, intellectually to me. It says a lot. It's like, well, this is the best camera, best customer support, best made camera. This is, you know, it's sixteen hundred dollars for the camera, but I mean, relatively, it's a cheap camera. Hell, the Nikon D850 is three thousand three hundred. The fact that these people don't talk about it is is uh, a big plus. You know, it's a big plus. The same way that. I've always said for countless years, at least two decades, one of my other mottos is, and I created the motto, is that I can always tell what someone knows 
by uh, the books they recommend uh, you read. It's like, yeah, can you recommend like really five intelligent, not like good books, you know, entertaining, but like really intelligent, wise books? Just like name them off, top five. And I can really tell a lot about what someone knows or doesn't know about things in general by the books that they recommend as the most intelligent or the most wise to read. Um, this is kind of hard to actually relate to you, but it's actually incredibly encouraging that those channels that are mostly about creating revenue for themselves, and that's fine, you got to pay the bills, you got to feed your family. You know, I don't have a wife and kids, those people do. I don't begrudge anybody for trying to make a living for crying out loud. But the fact that they don't talk about Fujifilm, they don't discuss it, they don't own it, that is really telling to me in a good way. Because those are the people that are doing something totally different in photography that I'm not, not I'm definitely not on the same book on. In other words, I don't jive with what they got going on. A lot of people don't jive with what I've got going on. I just want to help people, recommend the best stuff, give out tips and tricks. Um, I don't have any affiliate links. Have I asked for donations in the past? Yeah. Do you know how much money I make doing this? Oh, God. It's bad. You've not seen me make any videos from, like, exotic locations. 4,300 videos I have. There is not one exotic location. Hi, this is Angry Photographer reporting to you live from Iceland. That'd be the first place I go. Not in wintertime, but in summertime. Like, hey, I'm in Iceland. <laughs> you know, doing... No. So... It's hard to express that to you, but what it means to me. It's uh, very, very telling. It's like, why is it that the best camera with the best firmware, the best made, the best customer service, and this is it. Whether you think it's the X-T2 or the GFX or the X-100F, or all of those kind of mashed together in one mushy ball. Fujifilm. These people really don't talk about it. And that is encouraging. Like I said, from the unintelligent and superficial standpoint, you think, well, that's discouraging. You know, these guys are always talking about Nikon and Canon and Sony. Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Good. <laughs> Let them keep continuing talking about that. Um, I hope I got my point across. It's kind of a really a nuanced, very subtle point. It's kind of like I can tell more about what someone doesn't say than what they do. You know how cops interrogate. Really intelligent cops like watch body expressions and movements and twitches and stuff. Um, but the better, better, better detectives that are like interviewing like uh, evil people in the interrogation room, they don't just watch for body language and what a person says. Really upper echelon people that like interrogate evil people at the police station, they listen and watch for what they don't say. Because what a person doesn't say is as telling and often more telling. Because when people talk, they lie. So what a person says is not that telling. But what a person doesn't say, what they avoid, is like this person has talked about everything but this. That's really telling. That means something, and I'm going to interpret that. So, the fact that all these people that I generally, I ha, you know, I got to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. I just generally don't respect them. Not as not people. I respect them as people. They're trying to make a living. That's fine. But I generally don't respect that the you know, the uh, the stuff that they do. They don't talk about Fujifilm, and that is a uh, that is a happy, a happy period at the end of that sentence. I hope I made myself clear on that because it really is very subtle. Someone's going to say, I understood you the first two minutes. You kept flapping your lips. Okay, I know someone's going to say that. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, Fujifilm. <laughs> Bye.